Welcome, friends. We're glad that you've chosen to join us today in a study of the book of Daniel and to study about Daniel, prophet of the exile. We're reading to you introductory words from the book of Daniel, the first chapter. And the record says this, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God. And he carried them into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of of his God. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring in certain of the children of Israel, even of the seed royal and of the nobles, youths in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and endued with knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability to stand in the king's palace, and that he should teach them the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans." And thus we read, and thus we began. These are the introductory remarks of the book of Daniel, a book that has 12 chapters, and a book of great significance and importance as Daniel, an exile in the land and the city of Babylon, was one that over a long span of life, 70 years, was one that was faithful as a prophet of God. There are those that question the book of Daniel. They believe that it's not possible for one to be so specific and precise in some of the things that Daniel predicts, particularly in the 10th, the 11th chapters of the book. And so they believe and they say that someone 200 years after Daniel uh, took the name Daniel so that he might make his readings acceptable and that it really was not the work of Daniel at all. Now, we're not disposed today to question, to discuss these matters and to argue. Uh, suffice it to say, the Bible teaches us that Jesus is God, and I believe what the Bible teaches about that. And I believe that Jesus speaks truth, that in him is no lie at all. And Jesus said of Daniel that he was a prophet. And since Jesus spoke of Daniel and then cited reference to some of the things that were written in the book of Daniel, Jesus' acceptance of the book is enough for me. I believe that Jesus, as the Son of God, knew whether Daniel was a farce or whether he was a true prophet. But whether or not there was disputes about the authenticity of the book of Daniel, my friends, there is no doubt, there is no dispute about the actuality of such a thing as the Babylonian exile. It had been 900 years since the children of Israel had left Egypt on that fateful night of first Passover when they left Egypt the slavery and the bondage of Egypt, and they made their way for the promised land. And in those 900 years, there was likely no thing that had ever happened to them that was something that was as dramatic and traumatic to the nation as was this exile that they experienced. And not only was that true, but we find evidences in the last chapters of the book of Second Kings and of Second Chronicles. The historians that records the histories of the nation tell us that the king of Babylon came and ravaged the city of Jerusalem and took away those that survived into the land of Babylon. Furthermore, we have the book Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. All these were ones that were founded first in the city, or rather in the land of Babylon. And so Babylon and the exile there was a reality. The exile was something that had been predicted, though, a hundred years before it actually took place. 
the exile was first predicted by Isaiah, who lived a hundred years, and he spoke a hundred years before that exile. And he spoke to Hezekiah, the reigning king at that time, and told him that his sons and descendants of his sons would be ones that would go to a strange land and there be enslaved. And he names that land as Babylon. He told them, however, that they would be released and that there would be a king that would arise that would set them free. And he called that king by name a hundred or hundreds of years before that king Cyrus lived. Not only did the, the scriptures teach that this man was one that foretold of the uh, exile of Israel, but Jeremiah who lived a hundred years after Isaiah, likewise predicted that the nation of Israel, of Judah, would go into captivity. We look and we find in the book of Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, that Jeremiah tells that they're going to go into captivity, into exile, and they should not resist, but rather they should be submissive. But not only did Jeremiah tell what days uh, it would be that they would be in exile. He told them how many years he prophesied in the 25th chapter of the book of Jeremiah that they would be in exile for 70 years. And so we look and we see all these proofs that teach us there was such a thing as the Babylonian exile. And as there were those things that was the Babylonian exile, there were those prophets that lived during that time of the exile. Now, there may have been minor prophets whose prophecies were not recorded in the book we call the Bible. But there are three that are among the major prophets that lived and were uh, themselves eyewitnesses of the exile and suffered during the consequence of it. Those prophets were Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel. Jeremiah was doubtless the oldest of these three, and he was one that was warning his nation that they were to be ones that were to be uh, submissive to Babylon, for they were coming. And he said, you are going to go into exile. You can make it as easy by being submissive on yourself, or you can make it hard by resisting. For if you resist, the city will be destroyed, the temple will be destroyed. Well, of course, Jeremiah's message was something that people despised. They didn't want to believe it. They hated that message, and therefore they hated the prophet that spoke it. But the years to come would prove that Jeremiah was indeed a prophet. For the test of a prophet is whether or not the things he says comes to pass or not. And the things Jeremiah prophesied did come to pass. He was a prophet. And today, people hold Jeremiah and esteem that his nation did not. Jeremiah lived. He saw the deportation of Jews from uh, Jerusalem beginning in 606 when uh, Daniel as a youth was taken to the land of Babylon. Another deportation took uh, certain others and finally in 586 B.C. or 87 B.C. Nebuchadnezzar's forces came, destroyed the city, burned the temple, the city itself, tore down its walls and what people survived. They were deported to the land of Babylon. Jeremiah was known by the Roman authorities, or rather by the Babylonian authorities, and because he was known by these authorities, they gave him leave to either go to Babylon with the others being deported to stay where he was. He chose to stay in the land of Judah, the ravaged land. What happened to him finally, we do not know as far as his death was concerned. We know that forcibly he was taken after the people had left the land. He was forcibly taken into Egypt, and there his history ends. But there were two others that were prophets, likewise, of the matter of the exile. There was Ezekiel, and then the one that we are studying today, Daniel. Daniel was uh, uh, one that began in the deportation. He was among the first. He lived through the entirety of uh, the exile. He lived to see the time when the decree from Cyrus allowed the Jews to go back home again. 
when we look at these, we find that in God's providence, uh, these men were prophets, God's voice, uh, but they were placed in different spaces and different time or different places. We find that Jeremiah prophesied to his people in the land of Judah. Ezekiel was taken as a captive, and he prophesied to the exiled Jews of uh, the things that they were to experience. And Daniel, Daniel grew up in Babylon itself, tutored and trained in all the wisdom of the Babylonians, and served God well as he served the king of Babylon. When we look then, we find that uh, the Exile was a fearful time, and yet we find that out of it prophecies are those things that are so important to us today. For not only did Daniel prophesy about four world kingdoms that were to be in existence, including the existing one of Babylon, but Daniel foretold of the Messiah that was to come. And he foretold of God establishing a kingdom that would never be destroyed. He spake of his nation and what would be the end of it. And he spoke of the 70 weeks that had to do with the destruction of Jerusalem a second time. When in A.D. 70, the Romans came and destroyed the city and destroyed the temple. And never since that time have Jews been able to worship as the law of Moses or ordained that they should. And so, as we look, we begin. And we hope that as we've used these introductory remarks, there are enough to whet your interest in what this great book does have to say to us. We find that it will be beneficial to you. It will serve it as that that will confirm your faith. And we invite you to study along with us each Wednesday as we look at Daniel, a prophet of the exile. Thank you for listening today, and may God bless your way and God bless your day.